Hi, if you've ever wondered what kind of watercolour paper is for you and have been a little bit confused by the abundance of choice out there, um, I'm going to try and explain that to you in a few minutes to help you make a good choice about which paper works best for you. There are some extremely good manufacturers. I tend to use Fabriano or Arch, Arches, um, but the list is pretty good and it's worth getting some samples to experiment with. The type of surface is really important. Rough paper tends to have a very sort of dimpled appearance like orange peel and collects big uh, areas of paint and has a great effect. Somewhere in the middle is cold press, still slightly dimpled and still has a similar effect with collecting paint. More on the illustrative side uh, for pen work is the smooth paper. Um, some manufacturers idea of smooth varies so if you're quite fussy about it um, shop around. So really the two main um, the two main weights are 300 grams uh, per square meter and 600 grams um, and there's even heavier ones don't get me wrong and some of the cheaper ones won't be as heavy as 300 grams so why get what well the 300 gram is cheaper it's not cheap um, and that, that depends on the manufacturer but a decent manufacturer's 300 grams isn't cheap um, something that I notice about 300 grams is because it's physically lighter thinner paper if you're going to use heavy washes very wet medium um, it's highly likely to buckle you know and so you'll have a wavy effect now you're in a catch-22 because you're a new painter and you want to just sort of keep your costs low so you buy 300 grams and you don't have great experience with it because it buckles it's probably not your fault um, I mean you can stretch it that's a whole different topic uh, and y yes you can that's me just probably being lazy you can stretch it um, but you know, I'm just thinking, well, does poor performance make you eventually just say, do you know what, leave it, I'll, I'll, work, I'll work in coloured pencils or something, which is, which is another thing too. So um, the 600 gram is super thick. I mean, it's cardboard basically, and it, so it's twice the thickness. So the great thing about that is you don't need to stretch it. I've never stretched it, and um, it just takes a good old soak in without buckling. So. You know, if you're going to invest loads of time in a painting, the last thing you want is it to just buckle and just be something that you can't look at again. But then there's a price tag with it, and if you're starting, you know, you're going to pay, pay £12 English money, British money, £12 for a 75 by 50 sheet of um, 600 gram paper. And you know, if money's a bit of an issue, you're going to be looking at it with a paintbrush in your hand, scared to make a mark for ruining this very expensive paper. Um, so you know, it's a dilemma which I fully understand. Um, maybe the option here is to get some 300 gram from a reasonably good manufacturer and and go through the the painstaking process of stretching it. And then if you if you like your performance, if you improve, work on the 600 gram stuff. The other thing to think about is the format that your paper will come in. So sheets are generally a good idea. Um, they're normally about 75 centimeters by 55, 56, something like that. Um, and you don't have to paint a complete sheet. You can tear it down to size. Might produce a bit of waste, but you know it's a nice idea. And also in sheets you can get different thicknesses. If you go for a roll option, it will cost you a lot in the in the beginning. Um, a roll that I bought recently was 10 meters long by 1.4 meters wide. Now the good thing about that is you can paint on, you can pick your size basically, um, and it does work out better value. The only problem tends to be, I suppose, you can only get it in 300 grams, to my knowledge anyway. So the thicker paper, the 600 gram and above won't roll. Um, and also, you know, once you've had it stored, rolled up for a long time, you're going to pull it out of its uh, off its roller and it's going to be curved so you'll have to flatten it now you can get general pads like this that we've shown you or i've shown you earlier on on this 
and they're fine um, and you can get a variety of sizes um, something I prefer more from a sketching perspective is a block so blocks are um, sealed on all four sides okay and then when you're done you just put a knife into that sort of white area there and separate your page and lift it off now the, the, the advantage that the pad has over the block is apart from a, a bigger variety of size of the pad is if you want to keep all your paintings together in a book form um, you can't really do it with that because you have to take the, the top one off So a little thing to consider is tints. Now some manufacturers offer paper in brilliant white, um, a cream, an antique white, colours like that. Polar white is another one I've seen. Um, and there's a sort of a, you can experiment, but there's a, there's a sort of a place for each one really. And I think the things to consider here are, um, if you have a yellowy type cream colour, how will the paint look on that as opposed to a brilliant white? Um, and you can get the effect you want just by sort of playing around. Also, um, generally speaking, in watercolour painting, the highlights are blank bits of paper, if you know what I mean. Bits of paper, parts of the sheet of paper that you have left, uh, the original white colour. So they're going to be the bits that pop. Now, do you want them to really sparkle and maybe look a bit over the top or very effective? Um, experiment is probably the best way. I hope this video has been helpful in helping you decide what paper is for you. The important thing is to just give it a try, really, and uh, keep practicing. My views might not be your views when we, we might have different styles of painting and different effects that we're trying to achieve. So experimentation is key. Um, unless it gets ridiculously expensive and wasteful. Okay, um, please feel free to drop any comments in the comments below and um, like and subscribe. This will help me to make the right kind of videos to help you guys paint.